This podcast is brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world, and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage and microgrid solutions. And KimPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. You are joined by me today, Francie, your host, and Jordan, who will also be taking some host responsibilities as we talk about my first EV. Oh, we are starting a new chapter, and it is pretty fun so far. Uh, so thanks, Jordan, for coming on to the podcast. You were definitely there for a big part of the first experiences with the VinFest VF8, like I said, my first EV. You could say fun. Uh, that's a word to describe it. Um, but Francie, you've mentioned before talking about maybe getting a Rivian. And then, of course, we did the whole podcast where we talked you off the ledge of maybe buying the Tesla Model 3 Highland. Um, what happened and how did we get to this VinFast decision? They're not directly related, I got to say. Um, but, you know, I, I wanted an EV, but it is, and I've stressed this before, like, I'm super, you know, happy to go electric. I want to, I have wanted to, but finding the right choice is definitely a really intentional process, you know, not only budgeting and everything. So I had some optimistic ideas and some that maybe like wouldn't have been honestly financially the smartest. So I have some dreams. I'd love the VW ID buzz. I'd love a Rivian. Kyle's Rivian is really fun to drive around and it would be cool to have a truck. So I definitely did seriously toy with the idea of the Rivian, but decided that was not the choice for me and that I'm going to con continue to consider what's out there because there are just better value prop, you know, propositions out there. There's cheaper cars, there's um, different things to consider. So I don't have a Rivian. I'm not getting a Rivian anytime soon. And then, you know, it, it's fun. Like commenters have an idea of like Francie, like don't get a Tesla, do something fun and different. When I brought up that the the Highland, the Model 3 refresh might be a good idea because again, you know, competitive pricing and a great value for um, a really trusted EV that has the infrastructure and everything. And I'm familiar with Teslas, they're in the family. So I definitely considered that too when everyone was checking it out. Uh, but then again, yeah, the size isn't exactly what I wanted. And um then <laughs> uh, we were just kind of sitting around and Kyle was like, actually, he tweeted. He was like, hey, Francie, um, there is this deal, this crazy lease deal out of Raleigh, North Carolina at a dealership. And Kyle had lived in Raleigh for really cheap VinFasts, VinFast VF8s. Do you want a company car? This is going to be your company car. So that just kind of fell together of uh, fine. I guess we're going to get one of the most questioned EVs that are available on the market for this really interesting and um, cheap lease deal. And maybe it's not that cheap when we figure out what we did, you know, uh, to pay for it uh, as the company, but it is a, a good offer, I think, if you're looking for a cheap EV that isn't the best one on the market. But yeah, so that's kind of how it all fell together. It was kind of happenstance. Yeah, it's interesting. <clears throat> I think the VinFast is, it's positioned as a I mean, I don't know if they really have said luxury, but they're trying to go after the luxury market. I'd say pseudo luxury. Like, it's obviously not a Mercedes or BMW X7 type competitor. But the same people who have said, oh, like Tesla Model 3, Tesla Model Y are semi-luxury, like that, that mid-grade luxury, that's the target audience for VinFast. Um, and there's so many ways the VinFast itself feels to me like kind of a Wish.com Model Y. Um, even some of the software stuff, which we have a whole other episode we're going to do on the podcast about, you know, kind of the first real experiences and the road trip and things like getting to know the VinFast. I'm personally very excited. I think a lot of other people are, um, or maybe excited is not the right word. It's more like intrigued. Um, I'm excited on about the drama that could ensue, or maybe it'll just be great. There's so much um, not positive remarks about the VinFast. I mean, Kyle's video last year was I drove the VinFast VF8 and I wish I hadn't. Throttle House's video was I drove the VinFast VF8 so you don't have to. Donut Media has done multiple videos of just how not good it is. But it's a car and it works and a lease deal making it that cheap. Because the challenge is with the original quote-unquote MSRP, you look at all the other things you could get and you're like, 
why would you pick a VinFast? Mm -hmm. um, but then when a really cheap lease deal comes up, and for people who do want to dumb it down to, okay, what is the monthly cost of a car? That's when it actually could make sense because this lease deal is on par with some of the cheapest EVs, which have maybe better experience in some ways, but also less range, um, maybe less road trip capability. You know, some things like the Leaf or the Bolt, like can't even, or, or even like the BC4X just can't really do consecutive chargings, like, uh, or DC fast charging. So, this maybe has this niche marketplace. So I want to ask you, first of all, what can you share about the actual details of the lease? I mean, what's what's advertised versus what's reality? And is it that cheap? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what was advertised was $250 a month, zero down for the 2023 VF8 Eco trim. So this is, uh, there's the plus trim, which is uh, has, has more features. It has like the sunroof, the automatic Brunk and and um, the the back the power tailgate. Brunk. Yep. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and and things like that. You know that probably do up the experience. I'd love to. Maybe I'll include like uh, in the description. Um, you can go check out the different trims and all the differences. So, but it, it and and the wheels. So this with the with the eco, you do get you know better. Uh, mileage is what they're they're saying. A better rated range. So that was the deal. It turns out, I think it was more around like 300 with zero down. So we did put some money down to bring it down to closer to like 200 bucks a month. Um, and that also might have to do with the fact that, you know, we're out of state. We don't, you know, it's not the North Carolina deal that maybe it would have been. So I'm not sure exactly how it would have been for a North Carolina resident. Maybe it would have been closer to that number, but we did have to put some some money down to bring it down closer to the 200 dollar range, um, which is, like you said, I think still a pretty good deal to lease an EV as long as you read the fine print. So this is a three-year lease. And technically, if something happens, um, this is another aspect too, is that there's not service centers near me. Um, there's none in Colorado. There's like, I don't really actually even know where they are. I guess there's one in North Carolina. And, you know, I do have the number of the folks there so we can get some help uh, remotely. But uh, yeah, so that was the deal of the lease. It was pretty easy once we got to that point, but we were waiting a bit at the dealership. I think we got there Friday and we only uh, got the car on Monday, which, you know, maybe is not a lot of time if you live in town and stuff, but um, there was forewarning that we were coming. But with VinFast, I don't know if we will see this anymore along the way. I mean, we see it with other EV automakers, but there will be some software hiccups uh, have been, and they were fixing some of that before they were just handing the cars over to new owners or new leasers. So we did have to wait a little bit. So that was kind of what the deal was like. The experience was a good bit of waiting and trying to understand what the holdup would have been. I'm a patient person. It was fine with me. I didn't really have anywhere else to be, uh, but uh, definitely the customer experience um, I, I did like the people working there. It seems like there was a good bit of communication going on behind the scenes that maybe wasn't always lining up as to when the car would be available or uh, exactly what to tell the customers. But I, I'm a more forgivable, empathetic person, I think. So I was just like, okay, yeah, well, we're getting an EV. We'll get the EV in time. I'm waiting until that is possible and just kind of working with them. So that was my experience. And then we got it. Of course, it's a company car, but um, I'll also be able to speak more to the insurance in the future and how it differs from my normal experience with my combustion engine insurance and then adding an EV to that. So, yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> you did have quite a few hookups. It, it's interesting. Like you guys have pointed out, it's very unique. Usually you go to a dealer and maybe you're on the fence about buying a car. You just want to test it. And they're just trying to push the car on you. They're trying to sell this car. And Kyle was so confused because he's like, I am begging you to sell me a car. This feels very <laughs> backwards. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I was curious if that was like really kind of the case, but it, it made sense that it wasn't necessarily in their control. Although we have to point out, they initially tried to like tell you they were sold out. And then yeah. I guess that was somewhat of a lie because they were just trying to, I don't know, avoid yeah. people showing up to buy a car because was that because of the quote unquote stop sale because of the software? So, yeah, I think some people commented and they were like, it's definitely because like 
you're Kyle and you're out of spec and they don't want you to review it. But I really don't think that was the case. And it was a, a bit of misinformation there. there. The cars were not sold. We were on the way. We started in Tennessee. We borrowed a Model Y performance to drive out there so that, you know, you and I could road trip it back later and compare the VF8 and the Model Y. And uh, we get, you know, a flat tire on the way there because I-40 has crazy potholes. And we also get a call, you know, and we've been trying to get in touch with them too. Kyle had trying to, been trying to get in touch with the dealership. Then they call back and they say, hey, like, oh, actually, like, we don't have that, you know, the car available that we said we had for you. And also, we don't have any. We've sold them all. And Ky Ky I, I heard that and I'm like, I've never heard someone say that they sold all the cars, uh, you know, <laughs> for anything. Um so that was a little confusing. And so I think it had been passed down. Hey, we're not leasing or selling these right now. So uh, tell people that they're not available. And so that was communicated in one way or another. But it, we quickly realized we got another call from someone even higher up along the dealership chain that was like, listen, that's not exactly it. We are dealing with some software things um, and we're not handing these out right now. And we we're like, okay that's hopefully the truth. Like that's, you know, a bit yeah. of more straight up information, but it wasn't exactly what we got in the first place. So that was our first impression driving over there. And we're like, well, we're on our way. We want this EV. Uh, you know, we will be a customer and pay you for it and everything. So Kyle did say, you know, this is the hardest he's had to work to get someone to uh, lease him or sell him an EV. And yeah, we didn't buy it, but uh, did lease it for three years. So it's a pretty long ownership of it though. Yeah, that's that's a little wild. Um, committing especially that amount of time, and now the stipulations for the lease is there like a mileage cap we have to be worried about? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, ten thousand miles uh, is is kind of like the lowest option. So that's what we chose. I think you could go up to uh, maybe fifteen, twenty, maybe even up to thirty, uh, which is a lot. But we we chose uh, ten, and then you just pay the overage, which I think is like twenty five cents a mile or something. So yeah. You know, um, that might happen. <laughs> we drive a lot at out of spec. I love road trips myself. So that that definitely might happen. Uh, so it'll be cool to see, you know, just exactly how how much we're able to drive this VF8 around. So that was part of it. And then I don't think there were really any other uh, requirements with the lease. Yeah, yeah, I think that lines it up. Mm -hmm. Nice. So it'll be really interesting because you're literally living with it. Um, so A... This is interesting because this is your first EV experience as like, this is my daily. Um, mm -hmm. B, it's interesting because it's most people's first, um, I don't know, people have reviewed the VinFast, but no one has done any sort of long-term review notes that mm -hmm. I'm aware of. Um, yeah. I, I've never even met in like non-VinFast employees who even own them. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. What you think of it around town, what you think mm -hmm. of it on road trips, of course. Obviously, it'd be awesome to get it out here to Colorado at some point. I know that would be some mileage on this lease, but like if you're using it as like your inner town daily, that's not a whole lot of miles. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. familiar with your area, and there's like places not far from you. You have family yeah. close to you. So a lot of your quote unquote daily driving won't add up to much which leaves you room for these road trips. That would be really fascinating. So I think people will be myself sure. included are going to be interested in what's it like around town and also what's it like on the road. And of course, once we get out to Colorado, do some Canyon carving, some uh, Colton can review it on out of spec detailing and be like, all right, mm -hmm. here's the paint quality. Like what are we dealing with here? Uh, there's a whole lot of comparisons even to be done. I totally agree. Yeah. I think there's a lot to, um, cover as the daily driver what that's like and just dealing with the already bugginess of it on the day-to-day -day and see like how annoying that gets i think the reviews that have happened have been you know pr pretty negative and also like dramatized which is totally understandable there's all the opportunity to do that so i hope to give um, a really reliable review of someone who's never lived with an ev before like as my day-to-day -day and it just as a person also who drives around, like you said, you know, I work from home, so getting around town, but uh, those longer trips with the road trips, I think it'll be interesting also installing a charger at home and seeing how it does because we know how it fast charges because we did a yeah. road trip and also living in an area that does not have a lot of DCFC charging infrastructure. There are like two really 
uh, really level two chargers nearby that aren't at anywhere very convenient for me to hang out for like 10 hours. So um, that'll be uh, uh, interesting as well. So I'm excited, honestly. I'm an optimistic person in general, glass half full, although there were definitely things that I don't think represent the best buyer's experience that we experienced in North Carolina. Um, the after the, <laughs> the aftercare of getting the, the, the lease has, you know, they helped me through a couple of the weird data connection things that were happening and figuring those out that I think were unique to our experience. And then we did meet people at the dealership who this one couple just bought it flat out. They uh, are going to, they already got it at home actually. So hope to have them on the podcast actually to speak about what they think. Um, they don't have an EV in their life. So this is their first one. They decided to go just full fledged, bin fast, buy it. <laughs> so excited wow. to, to speak to them more and um, yeah, see who other VinFast owners are in the space too and see what they think because I think we're going to have similar experiences. That was another follow-up question is you guys spent some time at VinFast, more than you expected, um, at the dealer itself. And, With um, my dog, in fact, who was <laughs> such a good sport, Rafiki just chilled the whole time. People were like, what a great dog. He was very patient as well. I've learned that from him. <laughs> yeah, Rafiki is an amazing dog. Um, and how was like what was the buzz around the dealer? I mean, how many customers did you see and or interact with? And even good the question. employees there, because you know, a dealer group is not necessarily representative of the quote unquote brand VinFast or Vin mm -hmm. Group that's overseas VinFast. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious what Leith VinFast is like and the people you interacted with. Good, good point. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, Leith has decided to open up a VinFast dealership, which is, you know, interesting. Would love to hear more of the strategy for why they decided to do that. Um, the, the folks on the floor were, you know, great. Typical salespeople, I'd say, um, the service guy who I've spoken to about some things, like he's worked with um, BMW in the fast, I believe, and stuff, and he's really like knowledgeable. So they were pretty great to work with. I think the different information that they were and weren't allowed to give and try to, trying to figure out what do we tell customers and how do we, you know, keep them happy was um, definitely something that they were navigating, a lot of lessons learned, I'm sure. And the floor. So the first day, I would say, Maybe we saw like six other people, maybe like some couples in there, but Saturday was really busy. They had a lot of people coming in. I think the advertising that they were doing on Facebook and um, maybe even in the newspaper or something was really working to get people in to check out, oh, there's this new EV with a crazy uh, kind of affordable lease. Let's go check it out on a Saturday. And um, like one man I saw, he, he said he saw the advertisement and he was like, yeah, why not? That's just a cheap lease. Let's, you know, turn to his wife and was like, let's do it. Just so he was there checking it out, sitting in the car for a while. So it was busy. And they did say that Saturday was probably their busiest day. I don't know the exact number. I'm actually not very good at looking like at a group of things and guessing the number. That's one of the things my brain doesn't, doesn't do very well, but, um, they were, they had plenty of traffic, people test driving and, uh, sitting in them and asking questions. So we got to have plenty of conversations about what people's perception of VinFast was, what brought them in. And typically it was, they saw the advertisement, were intrigued, decided to go check it out. Uh, or maybe they'd heard about it before and now they had the chance to do it in person. So the dealership has a pretty big footprint in Raleigh, North Carolina. So I, I do think, again, it's interesting that they would go to VinFast because also a lot of EV manufacturers don't uh, partake in dealerships, right? It's straight from manufacturer to the customer. You go online, you order it. There's service centers like Rivian and Tesla, and I'm sure many more where you don't have to go to a dealership. So I think maybe this does open it up to a different kind of crowd who, uh, I mean, I, what do you think? Do you think that like this approach is more approachable or the um, opposite? I don't know. Yeah, I could see it go either way. I think just having a dealer that maybe like, Maybe since VinFast has had so many negative remarks as a brand, maybe having a dealer can help separate that a little bit, even though I don't know everyone understands that dealers are usually not the official company themselves. So I don't know if that's if that makes sense, but it's interesting and kind of cool to see that it is busy. And I think there's if there's this many people intrigued by this car, like obviously there's enough of an EV market share for anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and if VinFast can even put a car out, it like gives me hope for some of these other companies that we've maybe been skeptical about. Like, okay, 
if VinFast can do it, um, maybe anyone can. Although they are a bigger brand, they're backed by a huge company. Like it's not quite the same type of thing. Like maybe we should do a podcast on Tog sometime, the Turkish car company that's been government backed, because um, that's a very interesting story too. It's not the same <laughs> as a startup like Canoe, uh, which is just yeah. like trying to start from scratch. Same with Aptera. There's so many out there that I hope to see succeed. And it's like mm-hmm. it's interesting how many good products may not succeed, whereas the bad products do. Um, That's a good point. This whole thing's going to be a fascinating long-term story. I hope people are excited to hear consistent updates from you and whatever owners you can also track down because I think like beyond your experience, because with companies and and vehicles like this, you don't want to look at just the one story. Um, Same with when we cover other cars. Like We're not going to see some huge headline about, oh, this Tesla caught on fire. It's like, okay, What's the normal situation? You mm-hmm. can't just hyper focus on one story. So maybe totally. you'll have a really good experience, Francie, and other people will have much worse or vice versa. We don't really know. That's why, I mean, the literally journalism, which is what we do, is like find all the stories and then create the actual narrative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess, you know, I don't have no expectations. I have the expectation that anything could happen. And, uh, you know, I didn't get rid of my Subaru or anything, so I'll never be stranded. Uh, and I'll just see, yeah, kind of what the experience is like and be able to deliver a long-term review, which I think will be interesting and something that, yeah, like you said, has not really uh, been possible. It was really interesting to see how many negative comments there were on the out-of-spec reviews video where you can see Kyle and I's, uh, Kyle and my f- the whole experience picking up and leasing the car and then getting it and trying to charge it, which it does charge. If you look at that video, uh, we go to an EVgo station that is kind of like, yeah, it's crappy. The connectors are broken, um, needs to be addressed. They put it into uh, service mode after we brought that to their attention. And then we went over to an Electrify America station. It would only give us one kilowatt hour and one minute of charging. Turns out Kyle does not have an updated payment method. And that was the problem, but it does fast charge. And I was worried about that because then I dropped Kyle off at the airport and we're waiting for you to come to help me road trip back with the Model Y and the VF8. So luckily it does charge. Um, But yeah, to get this full fledged experience with the VF8, uh, you know, I think, I hope other people have an easier time getting it in their hands. Uh, I have had VinFast people, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn already. And so I think they'll, (laughs) they'll keep an eye on things and that if I need help, I'll probably be able to get the support. But I also would like to experience it as just kind of anyone who decided to take advantage of the lease. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, you got to drive it a little bit. So hopefully we're going to have a podcast all about our road trip that uh, sums up that experience as well. Cause that was fun, you know, uh, from Raleigh, North Carolina, all the way to the westernmost part of Tennessee, almost like 800 miles, I think. And uh, that was, that was a fun experience too. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. I mean, that's, that's a great way to experience a car initially. And I've loved a lot of the cars I've purchased was involved a road trip. Um, cause it was never, it's rarely that rare that you buy a car right at home. I mean, I guess you can, but if there's like one specific one you're looking for, and from my experience, it's been flying somewhere, driving it back. And that's when you really get to know the car for better mm-hmm. or worse. Uh, mm-hmm. in this case, I'm, we'll just tease that next podcast by me saying, I was glad I was in the model Y. Um, but there's a lot to impact there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's definitely things I, I am noticing, but yeah. saying, yeah, optimistic. It was definitely, we had totally different experiences, even though, you know, same charging stops, same route and everything. Uh, it was, it's really fun. It's not a direct apples to apples comparison, of course, but we were able to see that both can do the road trip. Yep. So at least, works. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I would say the overall lease experience interesting. You can definitely check out the out of spec reviews video all about it and um, see us drive it around for the first time. Get it in our hands. It's a green VF8 Eco Trim. Um, I do around here. People are like, "What is it? It looks nice." You know, they like the color. They like the look. Um, <laughs> my neighbor was like, you, "Are is that your new snazzy car?" Uh, so I think it's definitely something that people don't see. I was driving around yesterday though, and uh, an Ionic Six passed me, and they were like staring at me. So I think hopefully they, uh, as a part of the EV community, they were like, "Oh, that's a been fast, right?" <laughs> what if on your earth? goal is to be cool and unique, you have to point out that there's probably already more cyber trucks than there are VinFast VF8s. So you might be in that category of, I have a cool rare car. 
Okay, that's maybe exactly cool, what I was going for. You have a rare car. <laughs> <laughs> I have a rare car, car that is either for rank or spring roll, but you know, it's yeah. either way. I do, I do I already have a soft spot for her, even though she might be a bit temperamental. That's fine. So, I mean, yeah, definitely follow this podcast because I think we'll have a lot of stories in the future. I'm going to be just glued to my seat, uh, just watching and learning from Francie and always experiencing it through her, which is awesome. So I think it's great that we have a VinFast in the Outspec fleet as well as all these other cars. Because I think some people are like, mm-hmm. oh, you guys saw all these Teslas and Rivian. Like, we, we, and now we have a bunch of like super cheap EVs um, that are mm-hmm. pretty kind of terrible um but have their own use cases and so i think we're just trying to really round out our experiences and not just report on you know like when we go on do a first drive event like i did with the kia ev9 like that's one experience with the car but that's usually a tailored experience by the company and it's one time in a brand new usually top of the line car whereas mm-hmm. if you buy a car or lease mm-hmm. it you can really report on long-term ownership experience, which I think a lot of people will find valuable, especially in a few years when some of these leases are returned and the car goes up for sale on the used market. Right. And I mean, it's important to point point out like Kyle has one video of that one review because it's not easy to get a VinFast 2 review as well. Although, you know, other companies have done it and y'all should check them out, the ones that Jordan mentioned. So yeah, this will be a super interesting um long-term experience. I'm excited. I didn't know that I was going to be hazed quite like this when I joined the out of spec team, but you know, <laughs> yep, stuff happens. Part of it. So <laughs> All there you part go. Of it. yeah. Thanks Jordan for coming and uh, onto the podcast and just kind of picking my brain about this experience. It's yeah. I, I appreciate your time and I'm excited to talk all about of our road trip all about our road trip too so we can update everyone with how that went and uh, all the fun things that happened along the way and really give a picture that yes i did get home some people were like did you make it yeah i made it no worries (laughs) like really no problems but you should uh, check out the next episode to hear all about that so thanks jordan and thank you everyone for tuning in if you have questions on the vinfast experience i expect to have like a monthly update at least uh, about what I'm going through. <laughs> and so I'd be happy to maybe even have a podcast all about the questions about the, uh, sp- about spring roll, the yep. VF eight eco trim. That is now my little buddy. So please leave them in the comments. Let me know. Of course you can head over to Twitter and tweet them at me too. Hey, underscore Francie, whatever you want. Uh, but thank you for tuning in. Thanks for your curiosity. Thank you for your care. Wondering how I got home. I did get home. All's good. She's parked out back and she's happy chilling in the rain. Till next time. Till next time. We'll see you next time on the next Out of Spec podcast.